All right, so we are going to go through chapter two, section three together. Um, it is by conditionals and definitions on your paper underneath the title, you're going to write the objective to write by conditionals and recognize good definitions. All right, so here's our vocabulary word. A biconditional is a single true statement that combines a true conditional and its true converse. Yesterday, we did the uh, inverse, converse, and contrapositive. So the converse was when you switched the hypothesis and the conclusion. If I am at school today, then it is a weekday. You switch those. If it is a weekday, then I am at school. So if you switch the two and either way you say it, if it remains true, then it's a biconditional. Um, please, if, uh, please write this down somewhere on your paper because it comes up. A definition is good if it can be written as a biconditional. Because I had students really struggle last time identifying biconditionals because they're like, oh, it's a good definition because it's in the dictionary. That's not what they're saying. If you can write it as a biconditional where the original statement is true and the converse when you switch the if and the then is, is true, then it's a good definition. All right, so problem number one, writing a biconditional. What is the converse of the following true conditional? If the converse is also true, rewrite the statements as biconditional. So here's the statement. If the sum of the measures of two angles is 180 degrees, then the two angles are supplementary. So we are going to highlight the... Here's the hypothesis, and then the conclusion is that the two angles are supplementary. So what they're going to do with the converse is they're going to put the conclusion first. If two angles are supplementary, then they're going to come back in and say the sum of the measures of the angles is 180 degrees. And then we're going to analyze whether that's true or not. The converse is true. You can form a true biconditional by joining the true conditional and the true converse with the phrase if and only if. So on your paper somewhere, write if and only if because that is a biconditional. We use those words if and only if to represent biconditionals. So to write the above statement is a biconditional, we say two angles are supplementary if and only if the sum of the measures of the two angles is 180 degrees. So that's how we write the biconditionals with the if and only if connected in the middle. All right. All right, so let's look at this. What is the converse of the following true conditional? If the converse is also true, then rewrite the statements as a biconditional. If two angles have equal measure, then the angles are congruent. So the converse is if the angles are congruent, then they have equal measure. Now is that true? If two angles are congruent, do they have equal measure? 
congruent means they have equal measure. So the answer to that is yes. So now we can write the biconditional. So we're going to take our statement. If two angles um, if uh, if two if two angles have equal measure, so we're going to take away the if and write two angles. Have equal measure if and only if the angles are congruent. So one of the key concepts of biconditional statement is that it combines P implies Q and Q implies P. And look how it's written here with the double arrow. So it can go, it's true either way you say it. So for example, a point is a midpoint if and only if it divides the segment into two congruent segments. You can write a biconditional as two conditionals that are converses. So we are now going the opposite way. We're seeing a biconditional and writing the original statement and then the converse. So we're, we're going backwards now. So for problem two, what are two conditional statements that form this biconditional? So here we're looking at here. A ray is an angle bisector if and only if it divides an angle into two congruent angles. So we're going to use our hypothesis is a ray is an angle bisector and our conclusion it is a ray divides an angle into two congruent angles. So our first statement is if a ray is an angle bisector then it divides an angle into two congruent angles. The other one is the flip of that. If a ray divides an angle into two congruent angles, then it is an angle bisector. All right, so what are two conditionals that form this biconditional? Two numbers are reciprocals if and only if their product is one. We can say that this is the hypothesis. This is the conclusion. So we're going to put those together. So if two numbers are reciprocals, then their product is 1. And the converse of that is true. If the product of two numbers is 1, then they are reciprocal. definition is a statement that can help you identify or classify an object. A good definition has several important components. So they're going to ask you, is this a good definition? So it must meet these, these criteria. A good definition uses clearly understood terms. These terms should be commonly understood or already defined. A good definition is precise. Good definitions avoid words such as large, sort of, almost, or what's popular on the street today, like. Um, a good definition is reversible. That means you can write a good definition as a true biconditional.
right, so let's look at this problem three. Write a definition of the biconditional. Is this definition of quadrilateral reversible? If yes, write it as a true biconditional. The definition is a quadrilateral is a polygon with four sides. So the first thing you want to do is write the conditional. If a figure is a quadrilateral, then it is a polygon with four sides. Then you want to write the converse. If a figure is a polygon with four sides, then it is a quadrilateral. And then the biconditional says a figure is a quadrilateral if and only if it is a polygon with four sides. So because the converse was true, we could write it as a biconditional. So when we look at our got it, is this definition of straight angle reversible? If yet, write it as a true biconditional. A straight angle is an angle that measures 180 degrees. So if an angle is straight, then it measures 180 degrees. The converse of that is if an angle measures 180 degrees, then it is a straight angle. Now we have to determine whether is this, are both of these items true? If an angle is straight, then it measures 180 degrees. True. If an angle measures one, if, if an angle measures 180 degrees, then it is a straight angle. Also true. So now we write it as a biconditional. A straight angle. Oh, hold on. I want to flip that around. An angle is straight if and only if it measures 180 degrees. Problem number four, one way to show a statement is not a good definition is if you can find a counter example. Now this is where I happen to succeed very well in life and you can take that as a Lipman's te test for me being a negative person, but whatever. So identifying good definitions. Which of the following is a good definition? A fish is an animal that swims. Rectangles have four corners. Giraffes are animals with very long necks, or a penny is a coin worth one cent. So choice A is not reversible. A whale is a counterexample of that. Choice B, corners are not clearly defined. All quadrilaterals have four corners. So not just rectangles, but quadrilaterals, like a trapezoid. Choice C, very long is not precise. So what does very long mean? And also choice C is not reversible because a counterexample of that is the lovely ostrich. So that leaves us with choice D is a good definition because it is reversible. All of the terms in the definition are clearly defined and precise. So that is a good answer. All right, so let's look at our statement here, number four, got it, and tell whether it's a good definition and give an explanation. A square is a figure with four right angles. Is that a good definition or not? Okay, so let's write this down. Um, this is not a good definition. Uh, 
has a rectangle is a counter example. So let's look at this reasoning. How can you rewrite this statement, obtuse angles have greater measures than acute angles, so that it is a good definition? So if we put in that obtuse angles are greater than 100 and, or than greater than 90 degrees, and acute angles are less than 90 degrees, that would make us a good definition. All right, and that's it for today's lesson. Let's take a moment to completely...